everybody. Uh, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in. It's been one of those days. Uh, but I want to drop in and talk about something, not from the sensationalized side of it, but from a real down-to-earth conversation. Everybody's talking about Antonio Brown and his meltdown on national television every day and there's so many different angles that's coming up for most people are just firing into them and I'm not one to co-sign uh, uh, immature behavior foolish behavior non-adult behavior amongst men uh, at all but I am one being in the field that I am to be aware of different issues that concern mental health and uh, other forms of health uh, concerning not just black men but our people in general. Uh, for those who don't know what happened, AB uh, threw a tantrum on the sideline, took off his jersey and his shoulder pads and his undershirt and took it all off, threw his gloves and his t-shirt into the uh, to the crowd, to the fans and then, you know, did his exit, uh, ceremonious exit from uh, the stadium, from, from the field into the locker room, and from that point on was no longer a part of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. For those who don't know, there's been an ongoing issue of inexplicable behavior with A.B. for a few years now, since he left the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's been one thing after another. Uh, unbelievable talent at one point in time. You're talking about a guy who had such a good year that he ended up on the cover of Madden 19. Uh, and to get on the cover of Madden, you have to have been a hell of a player the previous season. And so he put up some mad crazy numbers. That was a season where he had a minimum of five catches and 50 yards every game. He's, he was just that consistent. He was just that good. Um, the thing is with uh, him is that over the last few years since he left the Steelers, he has been uh, doing a bunch of things that, again, are un inexplicable. And to me, as a mental health uh, professional, the first thing I look, when I see inexplicable behavior, I look for the causation. I don't just assume that a person is being stupid or that a person is an idiot or that a person is just the dumbest person on the planet uh, because they're blowing off so much. And you gotta understand, um, everything that's valuable to you isn't this valuable to the next person or maybe more valuable to the next person. So because you're looking at something and saying, how could he possibly screw this up? To him, there may be more important things in his life than what you see as this unbelievable thing that you just can't screw up. Uh, so the first thing you have to do is you have to look at that side. But more importantly, you have to ask yourself, can a person just be a stupid person? I, I, I believe so. But I believe in uh, most instances when you see inexplicable behavior, what you're actually seeing is the result of some form of causation, some form of a cause that is at the core of it. Excuse me, I'm kind of maneuvering and thinking and making on the fly decisions while I'm doing this. Uh, so with that being said, what you have to look at is where is it coming from? Two things. He could have an ongoing uh, form of psychosis, some type of mental issue uh, that is, has been diagnosed or has not been diagnosed. Or what I actually think is happening is he's exhibiting all of these symptoms of CTE. CTE is a condition that has been found, been found to be prevalent among football players American football players uh, that comes from the violent collisions they have that basically shanks the brain and, and, and bashes the brain up against the skull. And it, as those bruises that are created heal, when you have a concussion, they create lesions. Well, in the worst cases, Junior say, uh, uh, Aaron Hernandez, after he committed suicide in prison for uh, being in prison for murder, 
uh, after he uh, committed suicide, they found that he had one of the worst cases. At 27 years old, he had one of the worst cases of CTE they had seen. Junior Seau had a bad uh, thing. Junior Seau went from being a family man and a non-gambler to an uh, avid gambler and a womanizer, and it was inexplicable and nobody could understand. It got to a point to where he was so frustrated by it and help, felt so helpless that he killed himself, but he shot himself in the chest and not in the head because he wanted his brain studied. And fortunately enough, it, what, he, what, he, what he assumed was right, that he was suffering from CTE, something that had been discovered, uh, but not well known and not well discussed among the ranks. What am I getting at here? few years ago almost around the time that AB B started acting an, uh, out of whack he had a hit uh, I think the guy's name was uh, God, what was it Zomain Burkett uh, but anyway the dude hit him so hard that it looked like it almost knocked his head off but he was not completely unconscious you know I mean if you saw it you, you were probably hoping he wasn't dead and he was knocked out unconscious. Now, forget all the accumulative hits that these guys take on a regular basis. Uh, one hit like that is devastating. Let me let me give you an example. Uh, probably about 15 years ago, I started studying causation for certain uh, inexplicable behaviors for clients that I was seeing, but also other case studies that just didn't make sense to me. And I came across some work by a guy by the name of Dr. Daniel A. Mann, um, who is a psychiatrist, but also had started doing PET scans on his clients to see the health of their brain. We always think about the mind part of psychology, uh, but we rarely think about the neurological influences of the brain and behavior. And what happens is when you start seeing things like a lack of impulse control, irrational decision making, uh, behaviors that aren't uh, conducive to well-being. Uh, these are all signs and symptoms of a failure of the frontal lobe to perform its executive functions, which include impulse control, reasoning, rationale, decision-making, and so much more. People are able to maintain control and carry out a normal socialized life because they have the function of their frontal cortex, the prefrontal lobe of the brain, uh, which uh, uh, facilitates executive function. Well, when you have damage to the prefrontal lobe or the frontal, frontal lobe of the brain, then you have problems with these things, especially impulse control and poor decision making. Uh, you can end up with bouts of violence, uh, erratic behavior, and so much more. Well, what we found is something as simple as a kid falling out of a tree one time can lead to a complete change. There were case studies where uh, Dr. Daniel Amen literally work with these clients. They went from being very good children or very good people to all of a sudden out of nowhere having poor behavior and they couldn't touch it and they go back and they find out that one incident that had probably been forgotten actually had created a situation that they were unaware of and the health of their brain uh, was not optimal and the good thing is despite what you've been told that the brain can't heal itself and so dr daniel let me a man started working on that now the problem with cte is that you can't diagnose it until a person dies because you literally have to go inside the brain to see it and they haven't developed any other tests you know whether it's blood tests whether it's some form of scan or whatever that can identify it while a person is living. So it's no way to say 100% until a person passes. But all of the symptoms that we sit up and we see with CTE that we've seen in people in the past, AB is uh, displaying that right now. Now, because we don't know the complete story because we don't know everything, and, and until we can sit up and say 100% certain that he's not suffering from CTE, which can be very likely uh, uh, considering the sport he plays, but considering that one hit that was one of the most devastating hits I've ever seen. And I'm a football fan, a former football player that I've ever seen. That hit alone is scary to think, think about it. And you can think a, per, a boxer can be in a ring and have a bad night and get hit one too many times and die. So the idea that, you know, 
no one is considering this when talking about how stupid he is, what an idiot he is, how, how embarrassing it is. Let me explain something first and foremost. The behavior of another black person is not reflective on black people. We've got to stop behaving that way. No other group thinks that way. We've been led to think that way because we've been treated that way. But we have to understand that each, each individual acts on its own. But see, a lot of that comes because we consistently live vicariously through other people when they are successful. So what happens on the flip side is when someone notable who is notable and recognizable does something stupid we automatically assume that also reflects on because we want to be a part of the person that's celebrated but it, what that does to you though when you connect to people vicariously it works both ways there's nothing wrong with celebrating the triumphs of another person that's a good thing to do it's a positive thing to do it it, it, it edifies and builds you up as well the problem is when you associate yourself too closely, it opens you up to be responsive and reactive to the things that they do wrong. And so that's something that we have got to get out of our head. Now, my whole thing is, it's not about making excuses. If there's nothing wrong and it can be proven that nothing's wrong, then he has some issues he needs to work with. The, the, the one thing that I think that uh, I think is positive that's going to come out of this is that he's probably out of the league permanently, and that means that there won't be any more damage. The problem is he already has the damage, and that's going to be a problem moving forward based off the case studies and the, and the data that's out there about this uh, devastating condition. And with that being said, what I'm trying to get everybody to, to understand is we need to be careful about how we assess things from an outside looking in. And we need to be a little bit more uh, respectful and forgiving about how we judge one another, uh, especially when a lot of that judgment is coming from how you think white people see it. Yeah, a lot of it is because you think he embarrassed black people in front of white people because I guarantee you every last one of us got family members that do crazy stuff like that and when they do it in front of us no big deal it's not a problem until they get out and do it in a place where someone else that doesn't look like us sees it my whole thing is everybody's human everybody makes mistakes and everybody's different uh, that was a meltdown uh, what caused the meltdown is still the question but until we can sit up and say it's not CTE I think we need to be real careful how would you because see what people don't realize is these guys get up there for the sake of entertainment let's keep it real it's it, they are entertainers they get out there and they compete they're gladiators they get out there and they compete they put their bodies on the line and some people like earl campbell who can barely get around now gave us the best years of his physical life and now he's constantly paying for it every day because of the beating his body took and you look at other people like i said junior sayoff aaron hernandez and so many others the guy i can't think of his name now um that killed uh six people then killed himself had cte former football player killed six people then killed himself come to find out he had cte and it's easy to say, well, you should be able to control until you understand uh, the neurological function of the brain and how it works and how it interacts and houses the mind and how all that stuff works. You will always think that everything is controllable. And the truth of the matter is there are some people out there in this world who, because of things in many instances, completely out of their control, lack control and are dangerous and will do things that simply don't make sense. And so what we need to do is we need to be aware of the things that can cause that. We need to be aware of the signs and the symptoms to be able to recognize it and a bunch of other things. But what we don't need to do is be so easily uh, moved towards the point of judgment without having all of the facts. Because someone isn't acting the way we think they should act. We should ask ourselves why first. And we should look at all possible uh, points of causation to develop a reason study and, and and i think we we need to really start working and focusing on a whole collective effort to be better to be healthier to eat healthier a lot of things that will help in the areas of how our brain functions uh is within our control and so we need to start looking at that but i just had to sit up and touch on it because there's so much going on and i just really didn't feel like dropping in on each post and 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 and, and going back and forth with people who don't actually understand the condition and try to explain it so i'm i'm explaining it on a very elementary level but the bottom line is it's a very devastating disease if you haven't seen the movie concussion with uh um will smith 
it gives you some insight into it, but it's so much more than that. When you really look at how this happens and you think about all the violent collisions that you see just in one football game, and you realize these players do this over and over again from the time they're seven and eight years old up until their thirties. And you think about the damage that that causes and that many of them would not realize the damage is done until they leave the league and then the league abandons them. They make billions off of these guys and then they abandon them to the devastation of their service and we're judging one player because of a fit he thrown uh he threw i think we need to be really starting to talk about some other alternatives for our young men to go out and make major money outside of destroying their lives at such an early time and stage in their lives uh, we can get into a bunch of conversations about that, but at least if we're going to do it, we need to own the platform and benefit it from benefit from from a greater perspective, and also offer resources and greater levels of protection to deal with this. That's my take on it. I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.